Hello everyone, my name is Sunil Mishra and I welcome you to this course on Introduction to NLP. We are going to discuss uh, Fundamentals of Natural Language Processing. This is a very short course, a small capsule of uh, a very deep topic. Uh, we'll have a series of uh, video lectures close to 8 to 9 and then probably this will give you a quick overview of what NLP is and why this is such an emerging and interesting area in today's time. So let me start with the expectations or the objective of this course. So uh, again, you will uh, probably get some conceptual understanding of what NLP is, uh, what are different business use cases, what are different types of NLP problem, and what are the approaches in solving them, right? So we'll use machine learning and deep learning concepts around that. Now, this is, uh, this is uh, not a course on machine learning and deep learning per se, so we'll not go too much into detail about them, but we'll just use some of those principles here in NLP. We'll also do a bit of uh, hands-on, so we'll use NLTK library uh, and we'll do some programs like pre-processing of text or sentiment analysis and spam detection. So in case you have a background in coding, a little bit of Python, this will be uh, helpful. But even if you do not have a background and if you're not keen on coding, I hope this course will still be uh, useful to you to give you a conceptual background. So uh, this is the brief introduction. And uh, thank you once again for taking interest in this course. And I hope to see you in the other side. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this first session on NLP. In this, uh, this lecture, we'll try to cover the background and uh, the, the basic concepts behind uh, natural language processing. So before getting into NLP, let's try to understand why NLP is important. If you look at the digital world today, right? So it consists of three distinct components. One is the images. Uh, of course, you see those pictures on your laptop, your phone, your computers. So that's one part of your digital world. Second is the, the numbers. The computers have been naturally good. They have been designed to handle numbers. So that's the uh, second integral component of the digital world. And the third is a text, right? So text is like uh, all your literature, the word, the sentences that you see in um, in the internet or in the digital world. So these three actually uh, make the internet today. These three make the digital world today. Out of these three, if you look at uh, images and the text, these two are the emerging areas and these are the areas that are being handled by, by uh, emerging areas of uh, artificial intelligence. And a lot of work is happening in, in that space, of course, uh, Numbers also are being handled uh, by computers, but they have been naturally designed to handle that, right? So uh, if, you, if you compare these uh, three things, then I'll say that uh, computer vision and natural language processing, these two are the, uh, the most complex of the uh, digital world to uh, understand. So this course is about the NLP, so we'll not talk about the other things like uh, images and all. In this course, we'll only focus on NLP. So let's try to understand why NLP is difficult. To get this, uh, we'll have to get the difference between what we call a natural language and a formal language. So for the sake of uh, this discussion, let's say natural languages are the uh, languages that have evolved over a period of time, like all spoken and written uh, languages, while formal languages are something that we have created. I mean, humans have created uh, for the sake of, let's say, computers. So let's say all your programming languages are example of formal languages. Yeah, so uh, as I just said, I mean, natural language is evolved by humans while the formal language is created. Okay, natural language is context dependent, right? So same sentence, same word may mean different in the different situation, which is not the case in case of a formal language, right? The same statement may mean 
uh, the same thing. Okay, uh, related to the previous point, natural languages have semantic ambiguity. So uh, the uh, ambiguity need to be resolved as part of uh, processing of those uh, texts. Though we all study grammar and uh, we try to fit the rules into the spoken and written uh, language, but uh, most of the natural languages do not have very structured grammar. And that's why it's very difficult for the uh, computers to find a pattern around it and try to understand that, which is not the case for a formal language. So something like Python or C have very strict uh, semantic rules. And because of all these reasons, uh, natural language is not directly fit for the uh, machine usage, while the formal languages uh, can be directly fed into the computer uh, language. Then uh, other thing is natural language is redundant. So this means that you can have nested sentences and you can, you know, have multiple uh, multiple uh, sub sentences grouped together and a sentence can be as long as you may wish, while the formal language is very precise and brief. Other thing about the natural languages, it can be figurative, especially in case of poetry or in case of some allegory. So you may uh, you may mean something different while uh, something else is written or spoken. In case of formal language, there is no such uh, figurative meaning. Okay. Other thing uh, is uh, natural language, of course, it evolves with time while the formal language is, uh, uh, is created by humans. So unless they, they are changed, they do not change by themselves. A minor point, natural language has a concept of gender, noun, tense, etc. while the formal language has no such uh, complexity. So let's look at some business applications of uh, NLP, right? So one of them is, of course, for the especially able people. So people, for example, who cannot uh, see or people who cannot uh, hear. So for them, NLP comes very handy to do this automated uh, conversion between speech to text and text to speech. We all know uh, what a spam is because every day we get so many of them in our mail. So uh, we use NLP to categorize uh, mail into spam or non-spam. We'll also do a small exercise in this course to do spam detection. Language translation, in fact, the initial interest in, in AI and NLP came from this field. And this was the time of Second World War when the countries were interested in knowing what the enemy country is doing. So a lot of uh, work, a lot of research had gone into the automated language translation between one language to another language. Okay, chatbot, of course, is not new to us. So we have all kind of uh, automated uh, chatbot uh, uh, servicing us in, in, different, uh, in different industries. Article spinning is again a new area. So here, uh, the thing is that uh, the engine changes the, uh, the sentence or the part of the uh, document in a way that it is not an exact replica of the previous one. Mm -hmm. And this helps uh, you in, um, in the Google indexing or search pages where the duplicates are ignored. So a lot of uh, SEOs use these techniques to, to increase the... Uh, the you know indexing of their search pages then sentiment analysis of course very common to understand what people are talking and uh, what is the uh, overall uh, mood of the uh, speech or document or, or the tweet uh, document classification again is uh, is a very common thing so here we use nlp to go through the document uh, classify them into certain categories and do some kind of even synthesizing or automated uh, caption generation. Um, okay, so caption generation, again, uh, there is another way of doing that. Like you give an image and uh, your NLP engine should be able to generate the caption of that image. Uh, very, very commonly used these days in, in some of these uh, AI tools. In fact, it can be done the other way also. So you give a text and then your engine should be able to generate the image. So you can say that a man with a tie uh, and, and your uh, 
AI engine should generate such images. So both way it is done. Okay, automated question answering very first from the Turing machine. It is again an application of NLP and um, decrypting cipher again relating to the uh, to the earlier uh, time of uh, language translation and decoding, uh, spying, etc. But uh, Again, this is an area of NLP. So these are some of the uh, applications. Of course, there are a lot more. As I said, there's an emerging area and a lot of work is happening. So every day we find new application. Um, but this was just uh, some of them. Okay. So this was the first uh, session on the background and the use cases. And uh, hope to see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to this section on NLP. In this section, we are going to talk about the types of NLP problem and what are the approaches to solve them. Okay, so what are the approaches to solve NLP problem? The first and the most basic one is rule-based approach. So here you identify a set of rules to interpret a particular sentence and then you uh, you build your logic based on that right so this is very easy to implement of course you can you can you can uh, uh, you will also have very high level of accuracy because your rules are very strictly defined but the problem is that uh, it's very difficult to scale it up it will work very well for the data set for which you have created the rule but the moment you try to generalize it and the moment you try to make it to a bigger corpus, then this uh, approach does not work. And in today's complex world where we have a lot of text and a lot of unseen, unseen uh, um, uh, corpus of data, this approach is not very useful. The next uh, advanced uh, approach is probabilistic modeling. So here, instead of going by strict rule, the uh, NLP engine goes by something like uh, likelihood maximization. So based on the corpus of training data, it tries to predict what is going to be the next word in the sentence or what is going to be the next uh, sequence, right? So this uses a machine learning concept and uh, it uses all the uh, things like feature engineering, um, training of uh, the, uh, the model, and uh, it can actually also work on unseen uh, data. So it can have a higher accuracy in the, uh, for the test data, right? So it has better performance. And uh, I mean, if you, if you use a lot of vocabulary, if you train your model well, then uh, this is a better model to work. The most advanced stage of uh, uh, natural language processing is using deep learning. So here we use a neural network, most importantly, a recurrent uh, neural network, which is very, uh, which is very well suited for speech or sequence kind of uh, uh, problems, right? And uh, you can use again advanced techniques like LSTM. Now here the advantage is that this works very well for the unseen uh, data. So if you have created a model using uh, one set of uh, corpus, this will not only uh, work well with the, with the uh, training data, but it will also work uh, quite well with the test data. This is very easy to scale. So another way to look at the NLP uh, problem. So what are the different approaches of uh, solving them? Right. Uh, one basic level analysis that we do is uh, for each word. So we take the uh, word from uh, the sentence and then we analyze uh, each word for their meaning. And this is called morphology. So each word is analyzed. Second is where you are trying to find out the relationship between the word. So all your syntax and grammar, everything comes in here. The third stage is even though the sentence may be syntactically correct, it may or may not have any meaning, right? 
So in this stage, uh, the NLP engine tries to get the semantics or the meaning of the of the sentence. And the last stage is pragmatics, where you uh, where you abstract everything and you try to get the context. So, for example, when you read a book, right? So you may not remember the exact sentences, you may not remember the exact word, but you will remember the context of the book, right? So you will get the uh, highest level of abstraction. There are different tools uh, and techniques or packages uh, that are used. Uh, to study uh, and analyze this problem. In this course, we'll use uh, NLTK, which is a Python library. It's one of the oldest um, library and quite uh, user-friendly and easy to use. You can also look at some of the other uh, tools like Stanford Parsers or Spacey or Gensim, Mallet, all that. So let's look at different types of NLP problems and some of them we'll see uh, in this course and we'll try to do some hands-on as well. The most uh, basic uh, of all of them is uh, text classification where you look at a corpus of text and you try to label it. And very uh, common example of that is spam filtering. So based on the email, you categorize whether the email is a spam or non-spam. Same thing can be done for sentiment analysis, right? So let's say a movie review, right? So based on the review comment, whether the movie is good or bad. So these are like a basic text classification problem where you identify a label and assign it to a text. The second one is language modeling. So here you are predicting the next word in a sentence more like a sequence uh, kind of uh, problem, right? So here uh, you are doing uh, what is called a part of speech tagging, which is also provided by an LTK library. You do, uh, you identify some entity and then you tag it. So uh, you, you, you do the named entity tagging and then uh, you also do semantic slot filling. Okay, the other type of uh, NLP problem uh, is solved using uh, word embedding. So here, a uh, word is not just a plain text, but we try to assign some vector to it, which has got some meaning. So with this, we uh, capture the relationship between the words and we try to um, kind of uh, uh, virtually assign uh, a word in a vector space, yeah. right? So using this, we do sequence embedding and topic uh, model classification of the documents. Okay, the other one is sequence to sequence conversion. And here we use encoder decoder architecture. Here, uh, I mean, it's most commonly used for uh, translating from one language to another language because each language have their own grammar, they have own structure. Uh, so it cannot be just word to word translation. So the entire uh, entire uh, model is like encoding and then decoding again in the target language. Okay, the last one is a uh, chatbot. Of course, uh, we know there are different types of uh, chatbot. Some of them are domain specific. So for example, your banking chatbot knows everything about banking and they can do it can help you uh, doing uh, transactions while there are other uh, simple or uh, chit chat kind of chatbot who do not have any specific goal and um, here you can actually uh, just do a conversation like a normal uh, human so second type of chit chat chit chat kind of chatbot is more difficult to build goal oriented one is uh, easier to build even though that requires a lot of uh, expert knowledge so this is all I wanted to cover as part of uh, different types of NLP uh, problem and, and the approaches. Thank you for listening and see you in the other part of the course. Thank you. Hello everyone. And welcome to this third section on natural language processing. 
In this particular section, we'll try to uh, see the pre-processing of text. And this is a very important uh, part of natural language programming. If you ask any data scientist, uh, they'll tell you that uh, they spend most of the time in pre-processing of the text. The application of the model and other things are a smaller component of the time that they spend in the natural language processing. So this is more like a cleaning up of data and preparing it before feeding it into your, your uh, program. So the first element uh, of the uh, pre-processing is tokenization. Tokenization is a process of splitting the text or a, or a sentence or a corpus into meaningful chunks and they are called tokens. Now it could be sentence token, it could be, uh, it could be the word token. So there are different types of tokens. It could be like, uh, as I said, sentence tokenizer. It splits the paragraph into different sentences. Then there are white space tokenizers. Then there is something called tree bank tokenizers. All these tokenizers are available as part of the NLTK library. You can also tokenize the sentence based on the punctuations. So for example, let's say the uh, sentences Let's see how it is working. And if you uh, tokenize this using NLTK library, uh, and if you use punctuation tokenizer, this is what you get as the output, right? So very simple concept. Tokenization is breaking the large corpus into small, meaningful, manageable chunks. Okay, now let's come to the token normalization, right? And uh, there are various concepts that are applied in that. The first one is called stemming. Now, what stemming does is that it removes the suffix of a word to get the root form. And the root form is called stem, right? And uh, there are various, uh, various stemmers. One of them is Porter uh, stemmer. And uh, some of the rule they apply is like... Uh, uh, breaking SSES into double S. So if a sentence is, or if a word is ending with, let's say, double S E S, then the stemmer cuts the last two letters. And uh, so generally it converts the plural or other form of the uh, word into the base uh, form. So example is, for example, um, dogs, right? If you apply the stemming, it will get converted to dog similarly the past tense of talk talked if you stem it you'll get uh, the uh, the original word the second way to do normalize is uh, normalization is called lemmatization so in case of stumming we are truncating the word in case of lemmatization we are bringing the word to the original base word the original form of the word, which is called lemma. And this uses morphological analysis. It is not just truncating the word. Okay. And uh, in NLTK, we use WordNet database. The example of this could be uh, wolves uh, getting lemmatized to wolf, feet getting lemmatized to foot. So here you see there is no truncation, but uh, return to the original original form of the word. Now let's take a simple example of uh, pre-processing. So uh, this is a text for example, NLP is amazing to learn. It is a branch of AI at OpenAI and you provide a URL. Now this is a typical uh, tweet that you will see, right? So as part of uh, pre-processing, what you do is that you, um, you remove the stop word Okay, stop word and punctuation. So, stop word is something which is like, a, which is like a filler in English language, right? So, something like to, at, it, off, all those things. It occurs so many times in the uh, in the corpus that it doesn't have any meaning of itself, right? So, if you try to get the highest uh, occurring uh, word in the text, mostly you will get stop words. Right, so one of the way to pre-process the text is to remove these stop words. 
The second uh, step is, in this case, for example, removing the URL and uh, making everything lowercase. Right, so there are libraries available using which you can convert the uh, sentence or a word to lowercase. And the third is uh, you can use uh, stemming and lemmatization that we learned in the previous uh, slide. Right, so using all this, you can do uh, the processing of text. Now, these are very basic uh, steps. There are a lot more that are applied in the real life. But this will give you a flavor of uh, what it takes to pre-process the uh, text before feeding into NLP engine. Now, next we'll move into the hands-on and we'll try some of these uh, pre-processing steps and uh, hope you will find that useful. Thanks for listening. See you in the next lecture. Hello everyone, welcome to this course on natural language processing. In this session, we are going to do some hands-on. We are going to practice some of the concepts that you, that we learned in the uh, previous sessions. And we are going to uh, try uh, normalization, which is also called the pre-processing of uh, text. And here we'll uh, try to see different steps in the normalization. Now I'm going to use Google Colab uh, for this uh, this particular uh, course. So all throughout I'll be using this particular notebook. In case you are more comfortable with something like Jupyter, you can please uh, try that as well. You can also code along in case uh, if you want. The uh, idea of using Google Colab is that uh, you can have uh, like environment uh, in cloud, you can choose runtime environment from Google Colab and you can pick up GPU or TPU. So there are some advantages of Google Colab over other notebooks. But uh, uh, I mean, for the purpose of this course, you can you can choose any other editor as well. So let me uh, start with uh, the, uh, the, the normalization uh, code snippet. Okay, uh, now I presume that you have some basic understanding of uh, Python. So I'm not going to go into the basics of uh, Python here in this course. And I'm just going to use it for the natural language processing. So one of the most important uh, library for the natural language processing in Python is uh, NLTK. So I'll start with importing NLTK. And then in NLTK, we have a project called Project uh, Gutenberg, which is a corpus of open books, which are available for the purpose of uh, NLP uh, studies or doing some analysis. So let me download that here. Okay. Okay. So I downloaded that. I'll just see what are the what are the uh, what are the books available as part of that so let me list those books corpus dot gutenberg dot okay so this will list me all the files available as part of project gutenberg so these are all the books and uh, I mean, all these are classic books, so you can just uh, uh, refer to them for your, yeah, so these are the books, right? Let me pick one of the book here for the uh, pre-processing. So let me pick this book, right? And let me choose first 500 words of this book. So I'll say book one is equal to NLTK dot corpus dot Gutenberg dot words. Okay. Now this will give me the entire 
book as a form of word token yeah so i've got that token let me see what's there in that list so you can see uh, it has all the words and uh, in fact not only words it has all the delimiters right so let me choose first 500 words so what i'll do is uh, i'll pick up first 500 words in the book just for the sake of uh, handling smaller amount of data so i'll one is just an array so I'll pick 0 to 500 okay okay so now we are ready with the with the first 500 words and we are going to do various forms of normalization so let me call these uh, different steps so step one we will uh, we will just filter out all the uh, all the non words and punctuations all that right so let's say remove all punctuations and non words then step 2 I will remove all the stop words. So we saw in the in the previous session how uh, stop words can uh, can disrupt the whole analysis. They can tilt the whole thing in favor of uh, uh, like you know fillers in English, like and or that it those kind of things that may not have much meaning. So I'll remove all those stop words or common words. Okay. Then uh, let's say step three. Okay, I just convert everything into lowercase. Okay, let's say fourth, fourth step. I will, uh, I will do a limitization. So we, or let me do first. Uh, Stemming. Stemming is truncating the word that we saw in the previous lecture. So I'll say use stemmer. Okay. And then last step is lemmatize. Okay. So this is the uh, uh, this is a list of steps that we're going to uh, perform on the word first 500 words that we have okay so to remove all the uh, punctuation and non words we'll use uh, we'll use a command from the python which is and is is alpha okay so i'll just uh, go through this list okay for word in First 500 if word dot is alpha. Okay. So let me print this. Okay. So you can see here all the uh, Things like comma, apostrophe, colons, all the non-English words have been filtered out. So this we can say first uh, form of normalization. Okay. In the second step, uh, we can remove all the stop word. Now stop word is also a corpus provided by NLTK uh, library. So we can uh, use that corpus to filter out all the stop words from the from this list. Okay, so first let me import stop words. Okay, I'll also download it. OK, 
okay now i'll do the same thing that i did previously so i'll traverse through the list so i'll call it norm 2 and then i'll say for word in norm 1 if word not in stop words dot words and stop words are specific to language so here let me pick English okay so let me see what's there in norm 2 okay so there is some problem okay I missed the import keyword so yeah, import keyword yeah so now you can see all the stop words have been eliminated so here here you saw something like off uh, to but and all that everything has been eliminated so we have a, a smaller set but probably more meaningful set in um, this step we'll just uh, make everything lowercase so as you see in the previous list we have orange in let's say all caps so we'll just make everything in lowercase for the sake of analysis in norm 2 or I'll just uh, make it lowercase so I'll just say word dot lower I'll use this command of python in norm 2 okay and let us see that list norm 3 okay so you can see uh, yeah the last two words that who that were capitalized all have gone into lowercase so th uh, this was the third step now we'll use a uh, stemmer so as we saw in the theory stemming is probably truncating the uh, words into its uh, original form so we'll use a uh, stemmer so let me import tk dot uh, porter so we'll use a uh, porter stemmer porter stemmer okay and then norm 4 is equal to stemmer stemmer dot stem word for word in norm 3 okay so let us try to execute this okay so it got executed successfully now to see uh, how many words were uh, properly stemmed let us uh, traverse through the list zero to end of norm three okay i'll just say if now 
from 3 sorry for i in yeah norm 3 is not equal to norm 4 i then print norm 3 i norm 4 i so very simple i'm just uh, printing all the words that have been uh, stemmed so you can see here the output of stemming now some of them may not be correct also but uh, for example eyes have been stemmed as e by e nothing as not very as very so this is the uh, next normal form now last we'll use uh, limitization so limitization is uh, using morphology to bring the word into the original form so let me let me get a limit as well first again nltk provides the word net word net uh, limitizer okay so let me instantiate that and then i'll convert this into norm 5 norm 5 is equal to limitizer dot limitize for word in norm 4 so this is the think uh, let me type yeah let me try to run this command okay uh, so I'll have to download wordnet so let me try to first okay so let me try it again yeah so it has worked now let me see the uh, the list of words uh, that have been limitized and I'll use the same same code as previous one I'll just copy this uh, so let me call it for so I'm just trying to figure out all the words in my list that have been lemmatized so yeah so you can see words like feet have been moved to the original form like foot uh, pass has been moved to pas so like that uh, these three words have been lemmatized so in this assignment we saw how a corpus of word is pre-processed and normalized in different steps now these are very basic steps in the in in real life there are a lot more processing that happens but i hope this gives you some clarity thank you for listening and hope to see you in the next lecture thank you hello everyone and welcome back to this course on natural language programming in this section we are trying to understand various uh, rule-based approaches of uh, handling uh, 
the natural languages. So one of the key thing in natural language analysis is sentiment analysis. Based on the uh, given text or a corpus of text, we are trying to figure out what the reviewer or the commentator is trying to say. What is the mood of the mood of the uh, the statement, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. So one of the common thing is, for example, a movie review, right? So people review a movie after watching it to provide some comment in in the social media. Here the input is a is a, a string of uh, a series of texts and then uh, output should be the label and label is good bad not so good and uh, you know all those various labels can be created so for example uh, the review could be movie was good and i thoroughly enjoyed that so this is an example of a positive sentiment then uh, if there are negative words used in the in the review comment then you can uh, you can uh, figure out that probably the the review is negative even the negative word could be used in a way that it is positive so for example i can say the movie was not bad so it becomes uh, not negative it is either neutral or or uh, positive so there are various rules that you can apply to figure out the the uh, overall sentiment of the text we'll do a quick exercise uh, on this to see how actually this works in in practice okay second is part of speech tagging and uh, part of speech tagging is categorizing the word in a sentence and uh, tagging it to different parts of speech for example noun verb adjective based on the context now the same word can sometimes be a noun sometimes can be a verb or adjective based on the context and that is what uh, true for english language as well as for all other languages as well so this uh, tagging uh, helps us in disambiguation disambiguation so uh, basically it helps us to figure out what is the uh, what is the meaning of that particular word in that situation right there are different types of uh, taggers nltk provides uh, these taggers and we can actually uh, see them how this whole disambiguation is done the third important uh, classification is what we call a uh, document classification using tf idf so tf uh, stand for term frequency and idf is inverse document frequency so this is uh, a method of classifying a document based on the unique word right so term frequency is very simple the uh, count of that word term frequency of a particular word is count of the word in the document divided by total number of words in the document so it's a fraction and this is how it is used inverse document frequency is just the opposite of that so uh, it is uh, total number of words divided by the count of words in the document now we know that stop words skew the analysis uh, unfavorably right so basically uh, it it uh, tilts the analysis in favor of uh, stop words so this is also a way to figure out uh, if uh, if if the stop word should be discarded because for stop words the uh, the idf value will be low while for the unique words the idf value will be high our objective to find out in the document is unique word that can represent that document using which we can classify that document right so for example stop word cannot be used to classify because they are common and they are found in all across uh, documents okay now one of the challenge with uh, this uh, formula of idf is that if the frequency is zero then the idf becomes uh, infinity so just to take care of that we uh, add one and then um, since the values could be very large so we use a logarithmic scale and eventually uh, we use a tf idf as a multiplication of tf term frequency as well as, as, well as logarithm of the inverse document frequency 
So this uh, TF-IDF of a particular term in a document, uh, if the value is high, then that, that word actually signifies the, uh, classifies that document. And uh, this is the, uh, this is a standard way of uh, document classification. We'll do a quick exercise uh, in the later sessions, but I hope uh, I've been able to convey the basic meaning of uh, some of these uh, NLP practices. Thank you for listening and see you in the next lecture. Hello everyone and welcome to this session on NLP. In this particular session, we'll, we'll see a program on sentiment analysis. So here we have uh, a set of review comments and we'll try to categorize that review comment based on the corpus of positive or negative words that we have. So I have created uh, three files. One is the list of negative word. It's just an Excel with one column where all the neg negative words are listed. Similarly, positive word is another Excel. And then I have one Excel with book reviews. So these are the reviews of my book. As, uh, as per Amazon and I have just picked up top 10 review comments and then I'm trying to analyze the sentiment of those reviews. So uh, it, it's very simple in the beginning. I'm just importing some of the libraries. Then I'm uh, importing pandas for reading the file and these are basic file operation. So I have picked up the uh, a negative file XLS and I have loaded that in this uh, in this list similarly I have uh, picked up the positive uh, word file and loaded this in in this uh, list and same is true for the review file also okay um, just to see how those files are let me see how uh, how those uh, so I, I just list down the negative and positive list okay so you will get to see how the files are created so yeah so you can see uh, this is uh, 709 words and um, it has got all these uh, negative words alphabetically arranged similarly if I look at the positive positive list it has a set of uh, yeah 1204 words all alphabetically arranged and these are all positive and then i'll also see the review list yeah so these are the 10 review comments that uh, i spoke about uh, of my book who stole my job okay so this is basic file operation then I have written a small function here now this function will try to uh, understand the or calculate the sentiment of each sentence so I have written this function for each uh, each sentence okay each review basically so each review will have multiple sentences. So first I'm doing is I'm tokenizing the review into sentences. And then for each sentence, again, I'm word tokenizing it. So I'm taking out the word from each sentence in a loop, right? Now the logic is very simple. For each word in the positive list, I'm trying to compare if that word is existing in the in the uh, review comment and then if it is so then I am counting the positive count okay similarly if the word is existing in a negative list then I am I am actually decrementing the count the negative count and then in the end I am using very simple logic that if the number of positive words are more than zero and there are no negative words 
then that that uh, sentence is uh, sentiment is positive similarly if the number of times negative words appear is odd then it is a negative sentiment odd because uh, sometimes uh, you may use a combination of negative words which may become neutral so something like the movie is not bad so this is not a negative comment right so similarly uh, even number of uh, negative comments may uh, make it positive so like that other uh, other uh, logic uh, can be used now here this is very basic so very simple uh, rule based uh, analysis i am doing so this is the program that does the uh, uh, sentiment for each sentence and then here very simple i am calling uh, this this program in loop for each of the review and then i am printing it here so let me just uh, show you the output yeah so the average sentiment for each review so for example the first review comment is this the average um, sentiment is 0 0.5 like that so for each of the uh, reviews you can see the uh, sentiment and then um, so for example this one seems to be the most uh, most positive 0.6363 right so so this is the indication of uh, how positive the sentiment is now sometimes it it may not be the foolproof way of doing it and that is the disadvantage of uh, rule based uh, processing and uh, you know you can refine it by using better model and uh, maybe using something like deep neural network and rnn the accuracy can be increased and it can be extended to the larger data set. So this was a brief uh, preview on sentiment analysis. Hope you found it useful and hope to see you in the next session. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to this course on NLP. So far we have seen the individual analysis of the words and based on that we did some kind of document classification or some tokenization etc. In this section we are, we are, uh, we are uh, planning to use a combination of words and uh, we all know that the combination of word may mean different uh, thing rather than the individual occurrences. So one of the uh, way to handle that in NLTK is called n-gram. So n-gram is basically the uh, co-occurrence of the word uh, over a window of n word. So we can call it uh, a bigram for two two word, uh, trigram for three word in a sequence, right? So so uh, these n-grams. Uh, could be useful in predicting the word that may come after a series of or a sequence of word. So for example, if you have to predict the word Chinese after let's say, I want to eat, right? So what is the probability of uh, a word uh, Chinese uh, after the sequence of I want to eat? So a simple probabilistic model could be count the number of times I want to eat Chinese occur divide by the total number of uh, count where I want to eat appears with any other word. Right. So this becomes the probabilistic uh, model very simple way and based on that we can do a prediction or an analysis of, of uh, what exactly the word should be. So to uh, to do the exact prediction, we should know the complete context, right? So unless you know the previous uh, words, like unless you know I want to eat, right? There is no way to predict Chinese as per this formula, okay? 
So here uh, we take help of what is commonly known as Markov assumption model. And uh, this uh, model uh, assumes or this model states that the probability of a word depends only on the previous word and not on all the words prior to that, right? So this basically simplifies the whole, uh, whole, uh, uh, whole sentence into uh, the current word and the previous word, right? And uh, there are some mathematical derivations uh, into this. So you can look into uh, this particular uh, theorem if you're interested. But uh, the uh, purport of this particular model is that uh, we need not know the entire context to predict the next word in n-gram. Okay, now in this particular section, we are also uh, planning to do some, um, some uh, application of uh, machine learning. So here we are uh, planning to do some kind of uh, spam classification, very common, you see in your email. And based on occurrences of certain word, it can be uh, classified as spam or non-spam. This is a classic example of uh, supervised learning. So when Google asks you to classify your uh, uh, email, then uh, it labels that based on the uh, keyword, right? So uh, in, in a typical example of uh, machine learning, so we identify the feature vector here. So just for the sake of simplicity, I have said, for example, these are the uh, words, the occurrences of which may uh, may uh, make it uh, a, a spam or non-spam. So the data in the rows are the emails and the uh, data in the column are the words, the frequency of which is mentioned, right? And then eventually you uh, find out the target. So, so what the machine learning model if we apply this uh, data into machine learning model, then we'll be able to uh, identify the feature vectors. What are the uh, words that are important in classifying or making uh, uh, a mail a spam? Now, you can do it based on the rule, but we can, in this example, we will use uh, machine learning to automatically uh, classify them and we'll see how the accuracy is high in case of a uh, uh, better network, better model that we use. Thank you for listening and uh, hope to see you in the practice session for this. Thank you. On NLP, in this particular session, we'll try to do some spam classification. So we saw in one of the uh, lecture earlier that based on some keyword, a particular mail can be classified as spam or non-spam and a machine learning algorithm can be built on this. So we'll try to uh, see this in, uh, in the form of an, uh, an exercise and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how that is done in practice. So first of all, let's look at the data. So this is a data called spam base you can download it and you can read uh, about data also so this has got uh, different attributes so you can see all these are the uh, types of data uh, some are integers some are um, continuous numbers and uh, the last column of the data is uh, denoting whether it's a spam or non-spam so Zero means non-spam and one means spam, right? So based on this, uh, the machine learning model can be trained and then any new mail can be categorized. So we'll try to do that as part of uh, this, uh, this uh, assignment. Now, this is not a course uh, on machine learning. So we'll not go into too much of detail about the machine learning model how classification is done, how supervised and non-supervised models are created. We'll just try to use them here. 
right? So uh, we'll, we'll use uh, one of the machine learning model. So let's use uh, Adaboost uh, classifier, which is available as standard sklearn library. And uh, we'll, we'll try to fit the uh, spam based data there and then we will try to predict so let's let's start that so I'll just start okay I'll import add a boost add a boost classifier so we have classifier and regressor now this is more of a classification problem so we'll use classifier okay then let me import uh, pandas okay and uh, let me also import numpy in case I numpy okay so I have imported now let me try to read the file so I'll just say data is equal to pd dot read csv this is a csv file and call it spam base i have already uploaded this file here it is uh, in the form of a text file okay and uh, let's try to run this okay so it has run successfully now let me see what is the content of data yeah so you can see uh, these are the uh, uh, rows and arrows so the columns are columns are the attributes of the data and these are features and the last column is the categorization whether this particular email is uh, spam or non-spam now what exactly each of the feature means may be uh, read through the documentation but for the purpose of this analysis you can say probably they are combination of some words or they are you know a frequency of uh, those occurrences okay so now I have read that so I'll, I'll uh, try to separate this data into feature vector and the target vector okay so I'll just uh, take this data and uh, I'll uh, I'll read first uh, 57 columns as the feature vector and then the last column as the as the target vector right so let me pick up first 57 okay so this becomes your feature vector and then i'll pick up the the label or the so I'll say I'll pick up the last one okay so I have collected uh, now the feature and the target vector okay now let me reshuffle the data so it will randomly reshuffle let me use that numpy function okay shuffle okay 
So this will uh, randomly shuffle the data. And now we have completely randomized uh, data set. Now let us, uh, let us divide the data into training data and test data as is the norm in the machine learning uh, examples. So I'll download the model selection import train test split okay. so I have uh, and then I'll categorize the data so I'll say next train test y train and y test so equal to train test split and I'll give the input and I'll just keep the test size as 33.33 okay so I have I have uh, I have divided the data set and have created a sample of training data and test data now let me try to instantiate the model equal to Ada boost classifier okay now I'll say I'll fit this model into the training data right X train Y train okay this is done and then now I'll apply the apply the uh, model to calculate the score prediction score in the in the test data so let me find out the score prediction score so i'll say x x test x test y test okay hopefully this code should run now uh, I have used uh, all these uh, high level functions so uh, hopefully okay okay I'll have to use the value here values yeah so you can see the the model has run successfully and the prediction is 93.8 percent so this classifier uh, can uh, can classify based on this uh, training data a new male with the probability of 93.8 percent so you can use other model also and accuracy will be different for different model but the idea is that uh, the principle is same especially in case of machine learning you can just replace one model by another and most of the code will work as it is but uh, the idea was just to give you a flavor of how the uh, how the spam classification can be done in the real life uh, example hope you in this session we'll talk about the uh, word representation and how this is being used or this is uh, used by all the deep learning model in 
in uh, what we call is natural language processing and uh, and these are the topics that we want to cover here uh, we will we'll see first a linear representation of the um, word then we will we'll go to the uh, neural network way and uh, these are different uh, methods of representation okay so one of the basic uh, way to represent a word is what is known as uh, one hot representation and um, this is very simple very primitive okay the concept of this is that if there be vocabulary in a dictionary then there could be a vector of size v and each word in the dictionary can represent um, represent uh, one value of the vector where one value is one and the rest all could be zero so very simple each uh, each word uh, as as known as one hot so this is known as one hot representation of the um, word so for example let's say there are only four uh, words in a dictionary bus car dog and cat then they could be represented by something like this okay where just one of the uh, one of the bit is on and rest all is uh, set as zero and uh, that's how the entire vocabulary could be represented so this is very simplistic but this is a problem right so what is the problem now the problem is that each word each word in the dictionary will require a unique representation it will require a different storage and uh, assume that if the vocabulary has uh, 10 million words then you need a vector of 10 million uh, and 10 million uh, values right so uh, basically you need a very complex and uh, lengthy uh, uh, lengthy vocabulary uh, metrics to handle this okay other problem with uh, this kind of representation is that uh, there is no similarity that is uh, captured so for example uh, here a dog is similar to cat and a bus is similar to car right but if you find out the what is known as euclidean dif uh, distance between two vectors all of them have the same uh, same difference right so all of them will correspond to underscore root 2 so essentially all the vec all the uh, words are equidistant from each other but we know in real life that this is not how the human uh, understanding work and uh, so this may not be the correct representation of the uh, word right uh, cosine similarity is again mathematical way of uh, representation uh, of similarity between two words and in this particular case all of them will have zero cosine similarity so although this method is very simple um, it is not workable in real life due to its size and due to uh, lack of uh, semantics it doesn't capture the semantics so then we come to another uh, representation of word this is known as distributed representation of word and this was based on a very simple principle um, and i mean it's in other form also but this principle is known as uh, you shall keep a word um, by the company you should know the word by the company it keeps okay so what this means is like uh, you should not only uh, know the word by its meaning but its relationship with the surrounding words so for example if you want to understand the word money then you'll have to find out the relationship of the word money with other things like bank credit capital uh, and all these words are interrelated so this was uh, known as a distributed concept of uh, word and the way it is represented is what is known as co-occurrence matrix so again this is a very simple um, representation each word in the vocabulary is put in the uh, in the row and then each word in the vocabulary is also repeated along the column and then uh, this uh, matrix tries to find out the occurrence of each of the word um, within some proximity within a k window so for example if you are, are trying to find out the um, co-occurrence of the word uh, bank with money then you will try to find out in the vocabulary how many places bank and money occurred within the uh, window of let's say two words or three words 
right so these occurrences are captured here and um, they are represented in this particular fashion now this is a very simple interpretation it means that if the words are co-occurring then they are somehow related if the words are not co-occurring then they are not correlated with each other so that was the principle behind the creation of this co-occurrence uh, matrix now this also has some problem one of the problem could be the things like stop word right so you will have word of a the repeated so many times and uh, it will have so this will actually skew the matrix and uh, you will not be able to study it properly and uh, so as a solution of that uh, either these stop words are omitted or they are capped at some high value so let's say if the value is more than 100 then you don't uh, capture the co-occurrence anymore okay so to overcome these problem there is another method that is being used that is called uh, pmi method and uh, this uses a specific algorithm it uses a logarithmic scale of uh, finding out the co-occurrence now we can we can actually uh, um, we need not go into the detail of the formula but the the point here is that uh, let's say if the words are occurring together enough number of times and they are occurring in the dictionary enough number of time individually then re this ratio captures the co-occurrence uh, and um, one problem with again this method is that if this uh, um, if the co-occurrence is zero then uh, then pmi cannot be uh, calculated so i mean uh, one of the solution of that is take this pmi value only when the count of uh, or the, the numerator is more than zero okay uh, the problem with again this uh, distributed processing is the same it has very high dimension you have to uh, create all the words in the in the, in the vocabulary and uh, as the size of the vocabulary uh, grows your uh, basically uh, ability to um, use this co-occurrence matrix reduces because the calculations uh, and computations multiply okay so now come we come to the uh, modern way of uh, or maybe as a neural network way of predicting the um, the words so like in all the previous example they were uh, uh, i mean the words were being predicted based on either uh, co-occurrence or based on some some static value uh, this one is known as a prediction based model so in this prediction based model um, if you give um, uh, n minus one word to the network the network tries to predict the nth word this is also known as word to vec and that's where the uh, hidden representation of the word or the neural network comes into picture so here for example if we take an example of uh, let's say ram sat on a and you have to predict the fourth uh, on the fifth word uh, here in this case chair right so so here okay in the example i have uh, i have taken the word sat and then we are trying to predict what is the next word so this whole uh, representation is done in two part one is known as uh, the uh, hidden representation known as the context word and second is known as the uh, as the uh, output word right the output function is again uh, softmax so what it does is that it tries to find out the probability of each word in the dictionary given the input word so let's say given the word as sat what is the probability of uh, he what is the probability of man chair and things like that and on in this case okay the network tries to learn the parameters of w word and w context and uh, loss function is uh, cross entropy at the output layer okay so um, the difference between this model and the previous model is that here both uh, the w context and w word are learned as part of the algorithm so this is definitely going to be more robust than the uh, uh, the previous model of uh, distribution distributed processing okay and um, 
yeah training method is back propagation um, another model that is known as uh, skip gram model uh, this works uh, something similar but it has uh, some um, some variability also so in this uh, particular model uh, the algorithm tries to predict the context given the word right so in case of uh, continuous bag of word the previous example that we saw uh, there is only one context word okay but here in this case we are trying to predict uh, um, both side of a given word so for example if the uh, sentence is sat on a chair and the input is sat then we are trying to find out the probability of the word before this and the probability of the word after this okay and uh, so these are the algorithms that uh, maybe they can be you can study them in in detail um, the point here is that uh, how do we how do we find out if the uh, model uh, that you have created you have chosen is the uh, correct uh, representation right so there are different tests for that one of them is known as uh, semantic relatedness okay uh, in this method you basically ask a human to find out the relation between two words and compare the same um, using the model and if there's a I mean if the error is less then you can say that your model is good similarly it could be done for synonym detection uh, you can ask uh, the model to predict a synonym or pick the right synonym of a given word and the third one is analogy all of us have seen that as part of the various uh, uh, reasoning test or something so something like mother is to father is grandfather is to something so find out the fourth word so these are the tests that can be used to find out how robust your model is okay um, as we know the previous model is also known as word to vec okay now uh, what is the uh, advantage of uh, using this model so one of the fundamental challenge with language um, when we try to project that in in the uh, computer is the um, is a lack of the quantification so for example um, computers understand the numerical data you can do calculations on top of it and you can do all those arithmetic operations but languages do not uh, allow any arithmetic operation in the uh, normal way right so the objective of the model should be to convert the language in a form or what we know as a vectorial form using which the arithmetical operations can be performed and uh, by what we mean by arithmetical operation is the similarity between two words the antonyms synonyms so all these relationship can be captured between uh, the word right so here for example let's say uh, apples is related to apple in the same way as main are related to man so both are the plural form right so this is where the model tries to find out the distance between two words and find out some sense and you can call it a semantics or something like that okay now this can be extended to to anything else right so for example uh, if you could represent each of the word as a vector then you could do a vector operation on them right so for example let's say through some some means if you could arrive at these vector vectors for king boy queen or girl and then if you do some mathematical operation on them so king minus boy plus girl is equal to i mean uh, though it may not make any sense but uh, if you operate through the vector then you will arrive at something like queen so that is the whole purpose of uh, doing this word to vec you convert language into vector on which you can do mathematical operations now the idea of showing that in two dimension was just to give you an intuition in real life all these relationships uh, would be hidden representation and it may not be possible to interpret that uh, but uh, the point is that uh, it will 
capture the uh, relationship or essence of the language in the hidden model that is the uh, that is the concept behind it um, again i know this is a very brief uh, precursor of the topic and uh, these are uh, very detailed uh, uh, area of study in natural language processing and uh, and other uh, language processing um, but the objective was just to give you a brief uh, glimpse and uh, help you understand without any deeper mathematical uh, background so this was the last uh, lecture and uh, i hope this course has been useful to you for any feedback please uh, feel free to reach out thank you very much